Here we're going to talk about an extremely powerful tool, very handy, one that I use often when I'm surfacing something out. And that tool is called Bridge. Now, when I enter into Bridge, it's going to ask me what are my edges that I want to bridge to and from. So I'm going to pick this face near this edge in this lower quadrant. And I'm going to do the same for this face. You'll notice that it automatically went from one face to the next face. I'll select here. And what this does is it creates a bridge surface between these two surfaces from those edges that I picked nearest. If I had selected from kitty corner edges in such fashion, it would have turned out like this. So you can correct the problem by using one of these two reverse direction arrows. Now, the constraint type that's being applied is tangent. I can tell because as I look at this, I can see a little line over the circle. This is ind indicating a, a tangency condition. If I right mouse click over the top of this, you'll notice it says G1. I can go to G0. Let me do this for both. And this just creates basically a, a linear blend surf between these two. It's not truly linear, right? It bends along these edges. It's not a ruled surface. And I can also change this to G2. I'm going to right mouse click and say G2. Now as I do that, you'll notice that the symbol here is the circle, once again, which is the G0 continuity, with the two lines indicating tangent and then curvature continuity, G2. Other things that I have, if I look under constraints, you'll notice that I have quite a long litany of capabilities. You'll notice here is my edge continuity, so that's a redundancy. I can close that. I have tangent magnitude. That's this arrow. So I can come in and key in a specific value, or I can just click and drag this arrow, and you'll notice here, in this case, this one, gets larger and smaller as I drag the arrow. Next, I have flow direction. By default, it's not specified. If I change this to isoparametric, what ends up happening is the flow lines from this surface are now parallel to the isoparametric lines from surface to surface. Next is perpendicular. Perpendicular is making the flow lines come off perpendicular to this edge. And the same thing over here, and then it bridges in between those two. So those are the basic flow directions. Isoparametric is a, a good way to go if uh, flow is going to be very critical for you. In some cases, it is. Now, another option that we have, you'll notice that I have another arrow sitting on the back over here, and it's called offset. With the offset feature, if I grab this arrow, this allows me to offset this along that surface. So I'm not constrained to that edge. So by doing this, and then managing my magnitudes, I can get some pretty nice shapes in there. So by default, you select near the edges, and then this allows you to manipulate where you want the actual surface to reside on the adjacent surfaces. Next thing that I can do as well is I can grab these handles at the start and end points and drag these to their own independent positions. Secondly, I can say link start handles link and angles and what ends up happening is as I move this the start and end locations are now fixed to one another so if you just needed a partial blend you have a very quick and easy way of getting that partial blend and then of course settings this is by default in pretty much all of these surfacing operations this is just your simple tolerance and if you want to rebuild the curve.
But uh, other than that, these are your controls. Here's your offset value here. And if I go to edge, edge one, there's my offset value here. Again, I can modify that. Once I'm content with what I have, I just simply select OK to create my surface. Now when I do my modification on the surface and I go in there, you'll notice that I have all the capabilities that I had upon creation of the surface. As, you, as I've noted in other lectures, sometimes that's not always the case. Most cases it is. But in this case, it's one of those where as I create it, the editing functions are exactly the same. There's no trimming functions, so you can't simply trim or split any of these adjacent surfaces. You'll have to do that as a secondary function once the bridge surface is complete. So it's a bridge surface. It's a really powerful tool. Um, I use it, and uh, I think it's something that can easily make your Class A surfaces or surfacing experiments and exercises much more easy. It's definitely, um, I think, one of the better tools. And uh, over the years, it's really grown and, and, and has increased in its capability. So, um, But as far as what it can do now, it's great, really powerful.